Okay, now we're ready to install Cluster Manager, or FCM, and install the cluster. So let's go ahead and get FCM out of the way first. I'll go to Local Server, go all the way back down to Roles and Features. And it's really simple. I'm just going to kind of accept all the defaults here. I want it to be a feature, and it's going to be failover clustering right there. Yes, add the features, tell it next, and install. While we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and take node 2. You notice how there's really not much to it. There's, there's not a lot of explanation for me to give here. It's just clicking through a wizard. So I'll say next again. Go straight to features, failover clustering. Next, and install. And let's see how node 1 is doing. There we go. It's almost finished. Node 2 is just now starting. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to pause this, and I'll come back when they're both done. There we are, we have a completed cluster installation on both of these guys, or cluster manager installation anyway. Let me close both of these out. There we go. So now we have cluster manager on both the boxes. Before we can install a cluster though, we need some cluster disks. Remember back in that diagram when I was talking about the, the shared disk down there, we had two, a server on each side of the slide and they both had lines to that centralized disk, right? Well, that's what we're gonna create now. In order to do that, we have to have a SAN. But most of us don't have, you know, quarter million dollar SANs lying around the house. So how do you get a SAN in order to be able to practice clustering? Well, we're going to fudge it a little bit. We're going to use an iSCSI server that comes with Windows 2012, actually. So iSCSI is really just a protocol that you can use to connect to a disk like a SAN or a NAS via your network card instead of having to have a specialized HBA. So a lot of places are starting to do that because it's it's really cheap, right? Because all you got to do is add another network card and you've all of a sudden got storage. And a lot of the SANs actually support iSCSI as well. So this is a really good thing to do in our scenario here because we don't have a SAN but we do have a server that can act as a SAN, and this is gonna be just fine for our purposes. So let's go back to the DC. Now, I really don't suggest that you use a DC most of the time for something like this, especially in production, if you were gonna do something like this for production. But again, we've got a small environment and a limited number of boxes. I really couldn't afford to put the disks on either one of the two nodes, because if one of the nodes goes down, say the node that houses the disk server goes down, well then the cluster wouldn't be able to fail over because the disks themselves are offline. So it has to be on one of the two nodes that's not the cluster. So how do we do this? I'm on the DC, right? Yep, I'm on the DC. So I go to File and Storage Services, and I go to iSCSI. And it's going to tell me right here, to install iSCSI server, click Add. And it automatically checks what you need, so I'm just going to tell it next, next, and install. That's going to take a couple minutes, so I'm going to come back when it's done, and then we'll get this going. Okay, that took about 30 or 40 seconds. Now, in order to create a virtual disk, just click next. It'll tell you what to do all the way. Let me bring that up here a little bit. You can pick which volume it's going to be on. We've only got one here, so it doesn't really matter. The name. Okay, I need a quorum first. There we go. So the quorum is just going to, it houses the cluster logs and it, and the configuration state of the, of the cluster itself. So you, you have to have a quorum. Let's go next. Quorum can only be one gig. I've been in shops that had huge clusters and I've never seen the quorum over a gig. I'm sure it happens, but we get away with a gig in, in every shop I've ever been in. New iSCSI target. Absolutely. Let's still call this a quorum. There we go next now click and click to specify the iSCSI initiators that you want to be able to have access to this drive so what that means is which servers do you want to be able to connect to this to this hosted drive that we're going to create right now well since it's the quorum both cluster nodes have to have access to it so let's go ahead and give both nodes access i'm going to click add SQL node one, I'm gonna tell it browse. Well, okay, fine. SQL node one, check the name, perfect. I should be able to tell it okay. It should be able to find it just fine.
There we go, it found it. You have to add these one at a time, so now I'm gonna come in here to browse and I'm gonna do SQL node two. SQL node two, check the name, next, okay. There we go. I'll click next again, and you can take the rest of the defaults. Now it's gotta create the, the disk file itself. Now the way this works, right, is this is just a disk file just like you have for your VM machine. So here we go, it's completed. So <clears throat> there's really no difference here. You're serving up a virtual disk that's being stored as a file. You know, as long as we're here, we might as well go ahead and create the other disks that we're gonna need since all we're gonna do now is create the cluster and then add SQL to it. We might as well get all of the disks out of the way at once. So there we go. SCSI virtual disk, I'm gonna click new SCSI disk. Next, what do we wanna call this? Okay, so what disks do we need for SQL? We'll need one for the system databases. Ordinarily, we would need one for tempdb and logs, but we're gonna put that on there with the, with the system databases. This isn't gonna be a highly used server, right? I'm just doing this to show you how to create a cluster, so I don't really have to worry about scaling out my files too much. But I will give one for my system databases, including my tempdb, and then I'll give one for user databases and user logs and uh, backup. How does that sound, right? I'll take care of all of those. And I need one for msdtc. So let's go ahead and do msdtc first. I'll just call this one dtc. Again, for dtc, I've never seen anything over a gig. I want to use a new iSCSI target for that one as well. Tell it next. Call it DTC. Again, we have to add, but this time we can choose from the cache. There we go. See, I got node one and node two there. Click next, next, create, and it's going to go through the same process that it did for the other ones. There we go. Let's go ahead and create some more, shall we? Let's get the system DBs out of the way. Okay, so for the system DBs, it needs to be a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and give it a 20 gig partition. I want on a new iSCSI target. Next. Again, we get, we get to choose the boxes that we want to have access. There we go. Click next, next, and create. This one's gonna take a couple more minutes because it's a little bit bigger, right? It should take a couple more minutes, but it looks like it's not. Perfect. Next. Okay, what are we gonna create next? Let's do user databases. Next there, user DBs. Oh, let's give this one 10 gigs. We're not gonna do much with this. No ASCSI target. There we go. Back to the servers again, right? Next, next, and create. This one should be fairly fast. There we go, that one's done. And what was that, user DBs? Let's go ahead and do user logs. Next. User logs. Next. Oh, let's give that one five gigs. We don't need too much on that, right? I want a new iSCSI target. User logs. Add the servers. There we go. Next. Next. Create. Perfect. Close. And one more. I think we need a backup drive, right? Because I don't like to forget the backup drive. Call it backups, and we'll give it 
10 gigs as well. We're really not that interested. I'm doing it just for completion, right? Mostly so none of you guys will uh, write me and uh, write me nasty emails and say that I didn't create all the all the drives I should have created. There we go. That one's going. Should only be a couple more seconds. This is zipping through this one pretty fast. There we go. And close. Okay, now we have all of the disks created that we need to be able to put on all of the servers. Or, I'm sorry, now we have all the disks created that we're going to use in our cluster for both of our nodes. Now that that's done, and this one's still initializing, but it should finish fast enough. Now that that's done, we can uh, go to the individual nodes and connect the disks. So in order to do that, let's see, where am I? I'm on node one. So let's go over here to Windows and let's type iSCSI. Hit enter. It's, it tells me that I need to start the service, of course. Let's start the service. There we go. Now, for this, I need to give it a target. It seems weird, but the target is the host that, that houses the disks that we just created, and that's the DC. So let's go ahead and tell it it's the DC. Quick connect. We've got all of these guys in here. Connect. There we go. And done. So now inactive. I'm just going to connect to each one of these guys. See, because if I try to do a shift or a, or a control click, it doesn't let me connect. There we go. And I can come over here to volumes and devices and say auto configure and they're all right there. Beautiful. So now I can do the same thing on node 2. Go to iSCSI. Okay, again it's going to tell me it needs to start the service. There we go. Feed at the DC. Quick connect. Perfect. Close. I'll just come here and say connect. 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 There we go. Perfect. And volumes and devices. Auto configure and they all show up as these long gooey looking numbers, right? Perfect. Okay, now we have all the disks created that we need to create in order to create our cluster. So now we need to mount the disks and create the cluster, and that's what we're going to do next.